Welcome to The View from a Pew, a conversation among Christians who are out to grow their faith by asking the simple questions, the tough questions, and the stuff you really wish your pastor would talk about. Come on now, let's reason together. It's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so join the conversation. Call 855-244-0077. That's 855-244-0077. Now, here's your host. J. Michael McCoy. All right, welcome. It is the uh, 16th day of November in the Lord's Year 2012. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and this is the Friday edition of The View from a Pew. And uh, we don't have Maddie today. Uh, what was his excuse? They're in Kansas City. I. They're in Can. They're. In, I wasn't. They're in I Kansas City the, for the, a soccer tournament. The latter to get the, the excuse. Yeah, yeah. For those so. of you who don't know, Maddie. Um, is a soccer coach for Johnston and Urbandale, the youth league. So that's what he does. Football. So, no, soccer. Oh. Because he's British, so they call it football. Soccer. So, Army Brad's in the house along with Bob Montserrat, the cat in the hat, and of course, uh, Father Tattoo. And Father Tattoo is wound up. I'm talking like a three year old on sugar. So, uh, I don't know what we're going to get out of him today, it but could it be won't the be three, short. It could be the three Twinkies I've already eaten. Twinkies. You bought, You really that's, bought a box of Twinkies? I bought two it. boxes. That's it. It's the Twinkies. Is it, they're, they're, do you know you can't start a Twinkie on fire? It that's won't, what I heard. It and won't it, ignite. And I heard that it lasts forever. It will. Yeah. You, 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 you put that away someplace, and it'll still be wonderful. <laughs> You know, they've actually proven that one wrong. It's about 25 days and then it's stale. And at 40 years, it's actually solid in the same. In <laughs> we the got center. Snopes right here. We don't need anybody else but him. Snopes is right here. Or Snoop. What's that called? Snoops? Snopes. Hey, look, I'm an Snopes. expert when it comes to Twinkies. You don't think I got this girlish figure by not eating Twinkies now. Yeah, that's now. true. That's true. Um, let's update you on a couple of things going on. And then we've got some uh, uh, Jesus talk to do. I've got an interesting question that came up at... Uh, my Bible study last night. I don't. I don't know if you are in a small group or a life group or a Bible study. Um, I've never been one in my life, uh, except for the time when I took seminary classes, and I have uh, only been in one in my life, which is couples. And we have five couples, and we are we are meant to be together. We are destined to be together. And we have the most inter- interesting conversations. And uh, last night it was at my good friend Jeannie Kane's house, and she made these incredible smoked cornbread muffins. Yummy. Oh, they were good. And I only had two with no butter. And usually I have uh, uh, butter uh, with a little cornbread. That's how I usually eat those. All right, let's first update you on something that I have heard that has not been confirmed. So this is not factual. Uh, This would be, well, I guess it would be gossip, wouldn't it? Ooh, Bible says don't gossip. Um, So why am I going to do it? Anyway, uh, the Hostess brand has been sold to a uh, Mexican uh, baking company called Zimba. Has anybody ever heard of this? They, They market... Uh, uh, sweets and stuff in America. The Hostess brand has been sold to them, and so Twinkies and Ding Dongs and Zumas and everything else that they make, uh, Hostess makes, will still be made uh, made in Mexico and then shipped into the United States. So $18,500 uh, 18, jobs lost uh, because of... I, I'm sorry. Is it okay if I say agreed? I mean... Uh, you know, I on who though? Because on the unions, yeah. I have I have said this. I have been uh, punched in the what is this? My right shoulder from a union guy, and I've lost a couple friends when I've said this over the years. But the reason that America is in the financial position that it is uh, in a global sense is because of the unions. The unions have ruined American manufacturing. Now I understand what the unions did for individual people. And they, it was very necessary at the time when unions were formed because uh, uh, bosses, owners, CEOs were greedy and they didn't treat their people right and they were terrible working conditions, but it's a good thing gone too far. And this is a perfect example, a perfect example of why America has lost most, if not all, of its manufacturing to overseas. 
So the, the question then becomes, how can we stop that? Well, and when I say this, economic people fall off their chairs. I just think we stop importing. I understand that China can make a Nike shoe cheaper than America can, but it's putting American workers out of work. So let's just stop importing products that could be made here. Now, an economic person would then tell me that the world trade uh, situation would go upside down and everything we ship, such as our food and our pork, and I guess that's food, and some of the other things that we do, uh, that would be destroyed. Um, and, and I don't know about that, that end of it. I'll be honest with you. I don't know about that end of it. That could be perfectly correct, and this is where my novice economic stature is uh, dwindling. But um, Mac, I think just like the unions, it sound, it's a good idea, but it would end up going too far and it, it would do more damage than it does good there was a time where america did that i think we've gone past that that we can't get it back we can get and the things we produce are the things that are the high end things that that other people we aren't we don't produce anything brad well th there's stuff that is produced but it's intellectual stuff th and that's the the scary mm -hmm. thing is that when they do steal that the the ideas from it, and it, I, I hear what you're saying, okay. and we have to figure out either how the unions are going to go away when there there's nobody that is paying them their money to to exist. Well, so. I uh, uh, I had the opportunity to live in Marshalltown for a few years, way way back when, and uh, I watched the decline of an amazing city. Uh, they lost Lenox. They lost uh, Marshalltown Trowel. They lost Fisher Controls. That was a huge manufacturing city. And they lost it because the unions were too greedy. And Lennox moved down to Mexico. Trowel moved over to uh, South Columbia, or not South Columbia, in Columbia. Uh, Fisher Controls was bought by Ericsson Electronics, which is a Canadian firm. Uh, it's just too bad. Anyway, it is what it is. All right. Um, Bob, you got some updates on Israel uh, just a little bit ago. It is now, what is it, 12 hours ahead there? Is that what it is? I think it is. I think it's 12 hours ahead. So it's now 3 in the morning over there. Yeah, well, what I got was that they, they sent a couple of uh, rockets over near Jerusalem, hit, right. hit in the field. There was no damage, but they're targeting, excuse me, Jerusalem. Yeah. Jerusalem, which kind of surprises me. Why, why target Jerusalem? Because that is a city that's very important to the Muslims. Yeah. Well, the president of um, Syria? No. One of the presidents of, of the Muslim Brotherhood countries uh, toured, Hama or toured Gaza today, uh, showing that the Gaza citizens were safe, and of course they're not. Uh, has, has, has everybody seen the YouTube video of Israel pinpointing the vehicle that the Hamas leader was in and then they blew it up? I haven't. Well, it's it's no. it's the same stuff we've we've seen that Americans can do. Right. You know, from how many hundreds of thousands of miles well, or whatever that, that is. They have cameras in the missiles too. Yep. Right. Well, that is right. something that America actually does do though. When it comes to military weapons, we're the brains behind all the best stuff. And we do have the cutting edge and that's part of the reason why we are so successful on the battlefield. If you have the best toys, right, you don't but, have to have the most men. But, you know, we got to be careful who we uh, ship those things to. Absolutely. You know? well, yeah, and right now the uh, rockets coming out of Gaza are just, they're dumb rockets. Right. They just point them in a general direction wherever they hit, they and hit. And that's the reason why they're, they're killing a lot of fields, so. Yeah. Right, and, you know, innocent people that get in the way where Israel, of course, is using our technology to target what they feel they need to target. Well, that, that seems to be a thing with the Middle East, though, is they don't seem to care who they kill. And yet, as Americans, when we when we make a mistake in, in some of the wars we fought in the Middle East, oh, we're so cruel and unusual. It's like, but you guys send people into shopping centers and blow up, and you you shoot rockets blind and don't care what they hit. You're not going they're, after military targets. Liberals and progressives are hypocritical. You know they. But that you they know can that do whatever they want. Well, that propaganda I call it that is basically aimed at us, so that we feel terrible about that kind of stuff. It's not for their people. Oh no, yeah, no, I, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. Also, uh, the other headline that I see here is "Liberated Iraq." Liberated Iraq, which means that we liberated, liberated Iraq, mm -hmm. calls on Arab states to use oil as a weapon against U.S. 
And how would they do that? Just by manipulating the price? Or embargo or whatever. I mean, yeah. it's going to hurt them because then they're not going to get the money. But well, we'll just buy from Canada eventually. Yeah. But I, I wish we'd just stop buying from In them reality, we, we mainly buy from the Western Hemisphere, and the OPEC oil ends up going to India and China. Good. Let Japan. it go there. Yeah, and they can use that as a, as a tool, too, against us, meaning that if they hold out from them, that's going to cause ripples across the world. Right. I uh, heard on the program before mine, Dr. Brown, uh, the comment was made on a uh, web board or a Facebook or something that Christians should prepare for the apocalypse. Now, somebody tell me what's wrong with that statement. Nothing. Be prepared. How? Have your... Well, if if the apop- apocalypse comes and Iran, from their religious thinking, they want they want to bring the apocalypse. That's the reason why they want to get a nuke so they can attack Israel and start all this because they think it'll. And I'm not an expert on their religion, but the way I understand it is that will bring around about the the, the coming of the, the of their imam or right. They they can they think they could speed it up. Right, by cause doing but that. but how can Christians prepare for the apocalypse? I mean, are we supposed to store canned goods and water and no build no no bunkers? read your Bibles? Well, there is uh, there are there people there are people on both sides of that issue. Some say, yeah, you should be storing up food and you should be storing up ammunition and it's it's all based off of the word of the week eschatology. If if you're a pre mill guy. Then, then there's some rapturing and stuff like that, and it's probably not a bad idea to have some stuff set a, set aside that you can get at for, for, for this thousand-year reign. If you're an awmill or a post-mill, then reading your Bible would be your best defense, to spend, spend time in, right. with God and reading your Bible. Right. That's the only way we as Christians can prepare for the apocalypse is to know our Lord and Savior, because when it comes... It will, nothing else will be necessary. He'll take us away, and that'll be it. Well, or he'll take care of us if we're here. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, he'll open up his own high V, and you know, Christians well, hey, only. Well, he says he's <laughs> going to meet our the needs, our needs, if we look to him. You know, I, I wonder what would happen if somebody uh, in this country uh, had a business and said, "We serve Christians only." You know, like the old no shoe, no shirts, no shoes, no service. I suppose somebody would say that's against the law. I think you'd be at very least called a bigot and ran out of town. But Well, but Chick-fil-A wasn't. No, they were called bigots. They just didn't work because, unfortunately, and, and Bradshaw on webcast one, the show before four years, pointed out that like nine out of uh, nine out of ten people that are anti-union also love Jesus. Well, it just happens to be that nine out of ten people on Facebook and all these other places say they're Christians because the majority of the nation still says they're Christian. Right. And so uh, when when you stand up against a certain group and this group's much bigger than you thought they were, it ends badly for you. And yeah. I eat more Chick Fil A now. Yeah, me too. Than I Matter ever of fact, eat. I saw Dan. Dan was there. Yeah. When I drove up. Yeah, I, I had ordered my sandwich with extra hate sauce and bigotry, <laughs> and I was just I was eating away. Yeah, I uh, uh, I was. I, in fact, I think I ate at Chick Fil A once before that whole thing, and now I try to eat there at least once a week. I got to be careful on my diet. Well, the thing is, I like the food. Yeah, the food's it's great. Good food. Yeah. The spicy chicken sandwich is amazing with pickles. Oh yeah, delicious. yeah. You got to leave the pickles on. Pick, yeah. I no cheese, nothing like that. Just chicken, pickles, and a bun. And, it's and they a, don't even pay us to say that. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. <laughs> so, um, uh, what was the war that uh, Rabbi Kaufman was talking about in '09 between Israel and he called it something? It, it wasn't an actual war. He was talking about the the actual camp, like. The campaign. Overlord was the landing at D-Day. It was just the campaign. It wasn't a, a specific okay. where you'd go back in history and say, oh, this, the 09 war. So so what are you predicting will happen? Because I tell you right now, when we come back on the radio in 24, 48, 72 hours from now, the world is going to be different. Let's talk about that. Phone lines are open, by the way. We'd like to hear from you at one 855 007 live here on KTIA. Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. 
You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you gonna say that to a client? No. <laughs> you don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're gonna be listening. They're gonna to wanna to know what your challenges are. Then they're gonna come and give you options and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now and then leave and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I wanna find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not gonna have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me, but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did was perfect. It was great. <laughs> Keep going though. I like this. <laughs> Just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. ever been told you're not a good enough Christian? Well, we have too. Join the conversation. Call 855-244-0077. Now here's your host, president of the Not A Good Enough Christian Club, J. Michael McCoy. 321 on the 16th day of November in the Lord's year 2012. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and this is the Friday edition of The View from a Pew. And uh, we're talking just a little bit about uh, Israel and what's going on over there and how things are going to drastically change here uh, over the next uh, uh, 48 to 72 hours, uh, Israel, originally I heard 30,000 troops, but what I'm hearing today is it's 15,000 troops. They've mobilized them to the border, and these are ground troops. And so the idea is that they may go into Gaza uh, with ground troops and take out these, um, what do you want to call them, these mortar Terrorist rockets rocket launchers, things like this. So um, that should be interesting. Dan, quit playing, would you? <laughs> Sponging me. Um, all right, let's talk uh, for a minute about um, Pet Petra Petraeus. Petraeus. General Petraeus. He, um, and I, I can't wait to, to see this at the end, you know, what, what, what this whole thing is really about. Do you think we'll see it and we'll ever, ever have all the information, though? Well, I don't think we ever, ever have all the information, but I think we're going to get enough to the point where it's going to disrupt the Obama administration if it hasn't already tarnished them. I mean, the fact that this is all happening uh, within a week of the election is so suspicious. And the more you, at least the more I learn, the more disgusted I become. Yeah. But Petraeus testified before a closed hearing this morning that when the CIA wrote the report on the Benghazi attack, he listed it as a terrorist attack. By the time it got to Rice, who made the first announcement, it was changed from a terrorist attack to a uh, uh, protest over the video, the Muslim the, video. The way I heard it, and I don't know if this is fact or anything, but it was reported that 
the the words terrorists were taken out of the report after because it had gone through all the different organizations, FBI, State right. Department, and then when it comes back, nowhere in the report does it say terrorist. Right. But it the ambassador to the United Nations, she was given inform- that what the White House told her to say was what she reported, which was now we know untrue. Yeah. It, it's the uh, it was over the video. So you're saying that what, what Petraeus testified to has already been released? Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. It, it hasn't so- been released, but people the the senators and representatives come out of the yeah. meeting and say this is what he said. Yeah, oh, this is what okay. he said. So it, yeah, well, but it's factual. This yeah, isn't and that's just fine. rumor. It's just that they weren't going to you know televise it live. And so. the the picture that General Howard, the other general, the Marine Corps general, yes. yes that that he sent where he had no shirt on, okay, and he sent to this Kelly woman in um, in uh, Florida, which has gotten the, tangled up in this. The FBI guy. Yeah, or was it, it the FBI guy? Uh, two years no, old. No, two years old. The, the general. He's a Marine Corps general. Yeah, and I think he is somehow in the mix with Afghanistan, and it's it's all all these strange things. Like he's the one that took Petraeus's last job. Okay. So, so, so whatever Petraeus did before he took the CIA over, yeah. this is the guy that filled his last job and the guy that Petraeus recommended. And it's a weird love yeah. triangle thing. But, but you know, Literally. I, I, I've got to ask, though. I mean, in the whole scheme of things, knowing who's in office and power right now, why is this a big deal? I mean, why are the Democrats making a big deal out of it? I don't think the Democrats are. You don't think so? No. I, I think they're making a big deal deal of this to they're, they're saying hey look over here so you don't look at what they want you to look at it, I, it's kind of like some smoke no. and mirrors. i don't know that i agree with you though because bradshaw's talked about it for two or three days now it's, it's he wants to talk about it every day well um uh, i heard a guy on the radio the other day say uh this is exactly like watergate it's a cover-up by the government to tell us the truth but, except nobody died at yeah, watergate i was gonna say nobody died and no u.s ambassador was massacred at our consulate that was under attack right. as we didn't have the security. If all the things that were, went wrong, I can understand those. But then when you come and try to hide those, that's where it, it goes off the cliff and and it's unacceptable. Right. I mean, we can make a mistake and say we don't have enough security. Even though the ambassador is sending you email after email saying we need se- se- security here, this is a terrible situation, and maybe they knew how how badly they messed up. But if you, if you come in and say I made a mistake and this is what I did wrong, I'm okay. I I can understand that. But then if you lie to the American people right. and knowingly, consciously try to deceive us, because somebody knowingly and consciously tried to deceive yeah, us. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't want. To, uh, what I'm hearing is that they didn't want the word terrorist connected because they're they're. Talk the Democratic talking points was we've beaten terrorism. We got Osama bin Laden and we've beaten terrorism, and now we're attacked in a, a terrorist attack and, and on 9/11. I mean, this whole thing. I'm tired of hearing about it. Well, and but it, I want the truth. The the reality is, look look at the dates that the information's coming out on. It's the day the day after the election. the The attack happened on 9/11. I mean, there's a lot of coincidences that they try to pass off as coincidental that I'm I'm not buying. I, it smells like fish. It looks like fish. I think it's fish. Yeah. You know. I mean, I'm just not buying all this. This is it's weird. It's very bizarre. This this uh this big love triangle thing, uh, clouding up information about Benghazi and yet being tied to Benghazi is very awkward because it doesn't really have anything to do with what we need to know there. And they're trying to go, well, don't worry about that. Don't look behind the curtain. Oh, look, he was cheating on his wife. Yeah. And it's like, okay, great. Well, yeah, I'm glad he stepped down. What happened here? Oh, no, no, he was cheating on his wife. And then there's another girl that was mad and she, she was cheating on her husband. And this other general was cheating on his wife. No, no, no. What happened over here? Right. Don't distract right. me. Right. Right. You're well, exactly I, you're right. Agreeing with, you're agreeing with what I said about oh, all I agree that with you. Is, is, is it trying to distract the American people from... What is really important? It's the man behind the curtain. Pay no attention to him. We weren't. You weren't supposed to see that. Here, look at this shiny thing. You know, and it's. You're you're exactly right, and I I I just think uh, 
the the baloney just keeps rolling on. All right. Um, question. Question, question, question. Should Christians support personhood? Everybody know what personhood is. Personhood is that the moment uh, it is verified that a woman is expecting a child, that child immediately is protected by the law. It is it is a person. All right. I think that's great. This is the new push in America by the the Christian right. Or, or do we go for? Uh, and this is radical. That if you want to have an abortion, you can have an abortion at a clinic, at a hospital, whatever you want. But you will be charged with manslaughter. And you will have to face the consequences of killing a child. And maybe there is some reduced whatever it is. Maybe there's a fine. Maybe there is a jail sentence. Maybe there is community work. But no doctor, no plan, no one can can do that surgery without it being reported. You know, if if you if you get shot, Brad, mm-hmm. you're 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 out screwing around someplace and you get shot, and you go to a hospital. The hospital has to report to law officials that they've removed a bullet from you. Right. Okay. So why can't we have a law that says if you have an abortion, it's going to be turned over to the authorities? And you're going to be charged with manslaughter. Because our current culture would not allow that to go onto the books. Well, <laughs> no matter how, how much people would want to support it, there's there's no way with the people currently in power that that at least would would be able to. But you realize that if you drive down the road, when we get done at this radio program today and you go tooting down the road to your house – and you run a red light and hit a pregnant woman, and that child dies, you get charged for manslaughter. That's because she wanted the baby, for one thing. Well, but... You know what I'm saying. My, my point is, I'm, I'm with Dan in my heart. I want personhood. Then there's no challenges, no questions asked. But I think that you talked about what society would not accept. I don't think they're ever going to get personhood passed. I think they're. I don't think they're ever going to turn over Roe versus Wade. So I'm trying to figure out a way that that if this person wants to kill that child, they can, but they pay the consequences for that. Yeah, you, you know, I, I see where you're coming from, and I agree with you. Like I look at the Roe versus Wade decision, and I think it's permanent. I don't. I know a lot of people don't necessarily agree with that, but I, I don't think that's something we're going to get overturned. And so I go back. Uh, uh, there's a pastor I like named Vody Bauckham, and he's got a. And I, I'm going to talk about it. Yeah, he's a. He's got a, a quote that says, "If you compromise and you get the opportunity to preach the gospel, some some will mock you, some will listen further, and some will repent and believe. If you don't compromise and God allows you to preach the gospel, some will mock you." Some will listen to you further, mm-hmm. and some will repent and believe. And and I apply, and, and and then he fi- finishes up with so why compromise? And, and I, I I I'm tying this in because those aren't necessarily related statements. But if we tell people this is wrong, then maybe we'll get more of our heart changes because that's really at the bottom of this is it's a law can't protect these babies. But but a law, I agree with you. A law does tell that individual. It's wrong to kill your child. But they're not going to agree with that. I mean, we have laws. Me, well, <laughs> how many laws get passed, Mac, that me and you don't agree agree about? You know, that, like Obamacare. We don't like it, but we're being told that's that's fair. That doesn't make it any more fair in me and your eyes, does it? No, of course not. Okay, so if we tell a woman what to do with her body, okay, uh, she's not going to think it's fair. She's just going to hate us. Well, if we but can, remember, we already do tell women what to do with their body. If you're a young lady and you want to take off your clothes and go running down the street, you're going to be arrested. If you're a young lady and you try to sell your body for sex, you're going to be arrested. This whole garbage that the government has no right to tell women what to do with their bodies is once again hypocritical. It, absolutely, absolutely. Anytime somebody's trying to take something that's a sin and make it right, they have to be a hypocrite because sin is bad for, for, for culture. It's bad for society. It's, it's 
why it's sin. God, God established these things as negative. There's no sin that I can think of that's good for society and culture. And so, so, so you end up always being hypocritical. You know, you get the people that, that don't like, uh, well, let, let's just take the Twinkie thing. People that are in support of the unions and, and, and uh, don't want to work for it and get everything handed to them. Well, those people, uh, if they had their own business, would suddenly, uh, oh, but, you know, we got we to gotta think about the business owner. My money is a business owner. And what I did, I'm different than the corporations. They're hypocritical. Uh, every liberal I know that has a business that becomes successful quits being a liberal. Right. You know, because cause you, you realize, wait a second, you know, I, I want to protect. And, it's, and for me and, and my wife, I can only speak for our business in, the, in this sense. It's not about Don and I getting rich. We're not rich people. But it's about the ability to not be uh, penalized for making more money. If we work harder, if we sacrifice more, I don't want to pay a penalty because I paid that in the sacrifice. You're double charging me. Well, my accountant... Well, boy, is that a strange term. But my accountant, Rodney Musser, for 20-some years called me the other day, and we were talking about something, and I asked him about this fiscal cliff. And he said, wait a minute, let me, let me tell you what the fiscal cliff means. And I hear this, you know, on his keypad, and he says that if, if that is not passed and we go over the fiscal cliff, my tax rate next year will be 64%. That's That'll scary. be my tax rate. It goes back to the old rates. Yeah, it goes back to 64%. Okay, anyway, uh, we're just having random conversations. Uh, we're struggling with some things today, and that's the topic of the next uh, conversation here. Struggling with God. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. It's like they want to get hit. Need a body shop? Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live.
if you sit in the back pew or the front pew. It's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 855-244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. Okay, 338-22 before the top, Salem Radio Network News at 4 and 403 True Blue, hosted by Pastor Michael Mudloff. We are in a conversation right now. Uh, we're going to do the struggle thing in just a minute, but Brad, you wanted to uh, make another comment about something uh, Father Tattoo had said. And I understand when you're saying that you don't want to compromise because people are going to take it however, whether you comprom- compromise or not, but on the discussion of abortion, if we compromise and we can stop the murder of a few million babies and, and, and use that as our first step, I think that it's more important than trying to fight the, the good battle and get it completely illegal. Because there's still going to be abortions taking place. I'm not unreasonable. But, but I, 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 and I agree 100% with, with where you're coming from, but if we compromise and can move the bar continually saving a few thousand or hundred thousand or a million lives and then keep working for that that bigger one compromise now say you know the the life of the mother rape and incest because the, those numbers are and then but if so, we can get it to a standard stop right there though what's life of the mother mean and, and not what it means to you it's vague yeah what it means to anybody else see the problem is the language they're using is a legal loophole it's why I won't accept it. It would be one thing if it was literally the mother was going to die immediately if they didn't abort the baby. Because that's not a choice. If both the baby and the mother die, if they don't, if they don't abort the, the, the baby, that's not a choice. That's something God's already done. And we have the technology, thankfully, to save the mother. It, it, that's, that's not my, it's not, see, the problem is the life of the mother doesn't mean anything. The life means any kind of health, the life of the mother, or the health of the mother, uh, literally what they're talking about there is any, any distress. So if they're not financially set up, they could say it causes mental distress and that would be acceptable. And, and I know people are going, oh, that's not what we mean. It's exactly what they mean. And I understand that, but if we can, it took a long time for us to become the murdering society that we are. And if we can take back the beachhead and, and I'm not saying stop at that point, continue to work, but hopefully if you can kind of move the, the, the rest of the culture toward a more humanistic, maybe, uh, maybe that's the wrong word, but to, I agree a hundred percent. And if I thought that we had a chance of doing that, and if it takes another 10 years to get where you, where you would, hope that it would actually be all the the lives that you would save would be worth making i'm not disagreeing hey look if we can get some pro-life legislation or even quasi pro-life legislation on the books i'll vote for it every time i don't have a problem with that i uh, understanding that i'm an abolishment guy doesn't mean that i'm not willing you're to a pre-millennial no, I'm I'm a post mill. Abolishment is abolish abortion. There's pro life people, and now there's a se- there's a sect of that movement, or or another cult of that movement, or whatever we want to call it, called the abolishment camp. Okay. And 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 I would side more with those guys. I, I, no compromise, no baby. Uh, I want to protect every one of them. No baby left behind. Exactly. No baby left behind. The the, the problem I have with with all the when we start adding this weird language in that's very vague and doesn't mean anything like health of the mother or, or, you know, life of the mother is a little less vague. Um, these things are okay. Uh, the life of the mother argument where I would, where I would fall off there is, uh, when we come to two lives, uh, two lives and one of them isn't going to be viable unless you kill the other person, that kind of bothers me. Uh, you know, if it's one or the other, if it's, they're both going to die or one's going to live, you save the one that can live. Uh, these things don't bother me so much. Uh, it's it's the way they're going to be used. I mean, I, it's it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a tax loophole we see coming, you know. And you're like, well, that's a loophole, and everybody's like, oh no, no, they won't use it. And it's like, yeah, everybody's going to use that loophole. That's right. And and so so that's my fear is that it doesn't do anything. They give us a pretend victory, and they go, okay, now you guys need to shut up now because we just did what for, for you, something for you. We scratch your back, you scratch ours. And I'm not willing to scratch the back of a murderer. You know, it, 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 I just, 
I, unfortunately, it's a it's a it's a quagmire in which we have. It, there can't be any compromise on this. Now there can be. We can take steps, but that's not a compromise. I'm not compromising. Okay, then work work together this, but with what you were saying before, when I the way I heard it, I was like, I'm with you, but let's keep trying to move the bar back toward. Yeah, no, I I'm I would vote every time. I, you know, we 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 kind of we, we can go back to the election for a minute, even though it's a sour subject. Had the Benghazi thing and this nonsense been happening, uh, like we just had with Petraeus, I I would have had more to think about. I mean, you know, I I I don't know where all this is going. Uh, I, I am so in the end, you know, you th you should have voted for uh, Romney. I in the end, I look at the numbers and it doesn't matter, so I haven't really lost any sleep over it. But uh, if you would have, and then more people like you would have, yeah. But I, think I mean, we we're talking about four million votes. Here. Remember, sixty four percent of the evangelicals stayed home. I I understand that, but sixty four percent of Christians we had a, stayed home. It's a game plan, Mac. It, it's chess and checkers. I know. Uh, I know you've come up with this. It's Carl Rove with tattoos. Well, over no, here. he's it's, got the great strategy. For it's not. And listen, Mac. If you if you listen to it for two seconds and just admit that it might be plausible, oh, I, I agree. I agree, but I, I don't. I don't think you lose the game. Uh, you, you know, uh, don't fight the battle if you can't win the war. You don't lose the battle thinking that later we'll win the war. No, but you, it's it, flawed thinking. But in, in chess, you sacrifice the pawn to take the king. Well, I don't know anything about chess. That's yeah. a little short guy, right? I, I, the round head. Yeah, I, I'm just saying that here, here we let the pawn go. You know, and, and and I hope that we can bring bring our king to bear the because I'm really hoping that when this is all said and done. As a country, we move so drastically different in another way that we literally are running from where we're at now. Well, I, I hope so. And, um, uh, you know, at, 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 at our church, uh, we're studying the story. And if you don't know what the story is, I would encourage you to look it up. It's the Bible without chapter and verse. And it's just written like a novel. And we just have been going through uh, Judges. And prior to that, we talked about uh, Jericho. The city of Jericho, 440 years. They would sacrifice their firstborn, take that child and put it into the foundation of their home, and then that home would be blessed. <laughs> they had sex, open sex in temples, and the church took the money for it. So the, the church had prostitutes that they would have sex for. I'm sorry, this is in the Bible, okay? Um, um, they would have sex to raise money for the church. 440 years. God gave them to come around, and then he sent the Israelites in, and they marched around that wall how many days? Six, Six days. Blew their horns, and Jericho was destroyed. What are we doing as a country right now? What do we do with our unborn? We sacrifice them, right, for our own personal greedy needs. Absolutely. What do we do with sex? Anything goes, anytime, anywhere, with anybody, it doesn't matter. Don't tell me that God will not come back and strike this country down the way he has other communities and countries and societies in the past. And I think at 30,000 feet looking down like God looks down on us, we've been committing genocide against innocent children for 40, 40 years next year. 40 years, and that's a magic number in the Bible. That's considered two generations. Well, I don't know that we should get caught up on numbers, though. I mean, I, I agree. Well, 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 the Bible's filled with numbers. It, it, it is, but those numbers. Even the book called Numbers. Yeah, the, the Bible is filled with numbers, <laughs> but those numbers were about prophecies that have come and happened. I, now, could they coincidentally happen? Could God use it to illustrate points? Absolutely. Um, but I'm not even saying next year this is going to happen. But I think as Christians, we, we got to look at this country and go, okay, let's start protecting the church. Let's go back to the churches. Let's strengthen those. Because what's happened is it as Christians, and I'm one of them, I'm just as guilty, we've come out to become patriots, and we've forgotten where our roots are in that church. Well, we're Christians because we're Americans. No, we're Christians because we're Christians, and we live in America, and we need to protect our church. What would happen if the pastor of every church stood up this Sunday and said, this church welcomes unwed mothers? That would be a bad thing. It'd be an awesome thing. Well, it depends on what you mean by well, this church welcomes. Can they this sit conversation continues. Can they sit there or are they members? Also, uh, I just a little little tidbit on voter fraud uh, when we come back. It's next live on KTIA.
from the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. It's like they want to get hit. Need a body shop? Minor Wreck Express saves you time and money. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studio, this is Webcast One Live. now let's reason together the phone lines are open and it's your voice we want to hear so call 855-244-0077 now here's j michael mccoy all right 10 before the top salem radio network news at the top of the hour and then uh, of course we have true blue with uh, michael mudloff uh, do me a favor and if you have a prayer list or someplace that you write down, or maybe you just have a good memory, I want you to pray for Stu Epperson Jr., Chris Roloff, and everybody at the Truth Network. I've never met such a team of people who are so passionate for the spreading of the gospel. And uh, anybody who is that passionate needs our prayers. Uh, And so just add them in, Stu, uh, Chris, and the Truth Network. That's all you got to remember, Stu, Chris, and Truth. And uh, I, I would appreciate that very much. So, Mac, you said something before we went to break, and I responded out of turn real quickly. Uh, and, you mean uh, you spoke before you thought? I did. I spoke before I thought, and I put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> Happens occasionally. Uh, yeah, but you said, I what breathe if, occasionally, too. You said, what if the church started welcoming unwed mothers this Sunday? It just said every— Yeah. Pa- uh, your pastor stands up and said, I want you to know, young women— Young women out there, if something happens to you in your life and you find yourself that you are not married and you are pregnant, I want you to know that you're welcome in this church. I said that would be a horrible thing, and, and I, was, I was thinking of just one instance, and I was thinking of women that were intentionally living in sin and coming to the church to take advantage of it. Oh. Uh, what, what, what should happen is everybody that's broken, if you got a sin problem, you should be able to come to church— and as long as you're in, with a repentant heart going to church, and I think you should be accepted as a member and work with through the body, because restoration is only available through Christ. And, and, and part of what Christ uses means of restoration is the body. And so I think these people should be welcome. I think one of the biggest misnomers with Christianity is that, is that somehow we're a collection of good people. The best Christians I know were the worst people I knew. Uh-huh. And, and and God came to them in, in times in their life when nobody else wanted to touch them, and said He loved them, and He and He cradled them, and He brought them into His church, and came, welcomed them into His home and into His family, and they were supported by good Christians, and they became phenomenal, phenomenal Christians. Uh, this Saturday on a Rebels Cause Radio, we have one of those guys, uh, Timothy Brendel, who struggled horribly with. Uh, I know. Shameless plug <laughs> for is. your show. It is, but it, it ties into what I'm saying here. He suffered horribly with pornography, brought it into his marriage, and almost cost him his marriage, and God restored him. 
and it's a beautiful restoration story. And that's, so if pastors did, I would encourage pastors to do that. Come with a repentant heart. Oh, you wicked people, but, come, come and repent. But what if they don't be have a repentant heart when they come? Do you say, get out? No, but as a, to, to join the church as a member, I think, would be the wrong move. I don't think a pastor should counsel me. I would join the church even though you don't feel bad about this. That, that yeah, would be, th- I, I that, don't think you were talking about joining. Yeah, and so, just... so if it's just simply sit in the pew, hey, anytime we can get anybody in the pew to listen to the, go- to the gospel being preached, the word of God being preached, that's a good thing in my book. Welcome, everybody. I, I love churches that, 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 have, uh, you know, that are, are welcoming gay people into good, solid, Bible-believing churches and saying, hey, sit down. You know, we're not, probably not going to do you as a member, but we'll, ha- we'll have you come and sit and listen. Uh, we've heard stories about how that's been effective to— uh, to change these these Absolutely. people's minds, so I I think these things are great. Sinners are welcome in any church. I I uh, to wrap up this point, I I do agree with you that the way to get rid of abortion is to reach people's heart, and there won't be a need for abortion because people will have responsible. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Sex. That's why I like that. That's what we need to do. That's, that's why I like that. Uh, what was that? The clinic that we had? The I can't remember what it's called now. The True Choices. Uh, yeah, the uh, Informed Choices of yeah, Iowa. There you go. Eliminating the need for abortion. Yeah. Well, I, I I made the comment again last night, uh, and I, I I love to say this. I, I've decided I'm pro-choice. I am pro-choice. I think a woman and a man should choose before having sex to have protected sex. They need to choose to not have unprotected sex under any condition. That's why I somehow think, and I'm going to wrap this up, but this is how we started this conversation. I don't think we're ever going to get rid of abortion. I don't think we're ever going to get Roe versus Wade turned over. You know, let me compare it to alcohol. We tried to get rid of alcohol in this country and it didn't work. So what did we do? We taxed the living heck out of it. And we made using and abusing alcohol, especially when affecting another life, a criminal felony offense. If if I sit at my house, and I I haven't had a drink for 927, 26 days. That's good that you're not remembering. That's good. Is it? Well, 900, Thursday was 21, 22, 22. Anyway. It's okay if you forget. If it, I, I can ha- I can legally have alcoholic beverage, but if I go out and drive a car after having too much, it's a crime. So if you want to have unprotected sex, there's no way we can stop you from doing that. But if that results in a pregnancy, you've chosen to have a child. Therefore, if you choose to end that child, if you choose to abuse that right to reproduce, there's going to be a society, uh, 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 there's going to be a punishment. Well, you know, it's really weird. If you ever see somebody with a big family and you, and you go, wow, you got a lot of kids. And, and you know, I like to rib the, the dad and be like, you know how that happens, right? Yeah. Well, apparently, as a society, we don't. And so I, I kind of like that. I think I think that we need to inform people of, of the when you engage in sexual activity, this is the result. In fact, this is, this is actually why it was created. So don't be surprised yeah. when this happens. And, All right. But before we leave today, I just, I'm going to totally change the subject for just a moment, but this is really not something to converse about it. I just want people to think about this. You know, they say that there's no vo- I want to talk about the election for a second. They say that there's no voter fraud in this country That's and that it's hard true. to prove. It's hard to prove. I, I want to give you a fact. This, this, is, this is a fact. This is not some blog, liar, made up something. In 59 precincts... In Philadelphia, 59 precincts in Philadelphia, Mitt Romney did not receive one vote. That's that's impossible. The Philadelphia Inquirer reported today that in 59 precincts in Philadelphia, the GOP nominee received not a single vote. According to the Cleveland Plain Dealer, nine precincts in Cleveland returned zero Romney votes. And when I heard that the votes for Obama were so much higher in Polk County, that made when I because I looked at the sheets of Republicans and Democrats signing in when I went to vote. Yeah. To to hear that the number made me question even Polk County in Des Moines. Well, I just uh, um, I just take it for what it's worth. I just, I don't know how fifty nine precincts. In the United States of America, how many voters is that? Should we say there's at least a thousand people in a precinct? At least. So fifty-nine thousand out of sixty thousand people, no, 
I'm not talking about a minority or three or less than a hundred. It's never happened before in those precincts where one person got 100% of the votes. All right. See you on Monday. And please, this weekend, take some time out and just pray. Have a great weekend.